Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video. I wanna talk about how to host your Godot export in a React or Next.js application. There's two main ways that you can make this happen. The first is utilizing Godot's out of the box export method, which will generate an HTML file, and then you can embed an iframe on your website that will point directly to that HTML file. And that HTML file has everything you need to bootstrap your game and get it started inside of your React application. But there's one possible downside with this method. When you're using an iframe, it blocks all communication between the hosting layer of your application and whatever is inside of that iframe. So if, for example, you had a game and you needed to communicate with the upper website to figure out stuff like user data, which is my use case, then embedding inside of an iframe is not going to be helpful for you. But if you're building in Godot and you still wanna host that Godot export on the web, it is possible. It just takes a bit of engineering. So like I said, that HTML file that Godot exports has everything you need to bootstrap the Godot game. So you're just going to need to reverse engineer the JavaScript that happens inside of that HTML file and do it yourself inside of your React application. Now there are some third-party libraries that can help you with this, such as React Godot. In that case, it hasn't been updated since 2020, so I didn't really want to use it for my needs. But I did find a project called JSGD Bridge. This has been updated as recently as 2022. Unfortunately, it still didn't work for what I was trying to do, but I did find a way to modify it in order to make it work in a way that I wanted to. So let's take a look at my code. This is the game route in my Next.js application. It's important to put your game at the top level of the route because otherwise the component that houses the game will reload every time focus is switched back to your React window, which can often re-instantiate your game and just reset all of your settings. That was a problem that I ran into and the way I fixed it was by moving all of my Godot initialization logic to the top layer, to the top level of that page component. So again, here we are in that game route and it, for the most part, it looks like any other React application. The only difference here in the import is that I'm importing this engine class from my components folder. So that engine class is going to just define what the engine object is and is expecting for the sake of TypeScript. So at the core of what's happening here, we're doing two things. One, we're constructing an engine object that powers our game. And two, we're attaching that engine object to a canvas element, which is going to run and display our game. So here on line 50, I'm creating a use ref, which is going to be our engine ref. Then we're creating a function on 53 called start engine. That's going to create a Godot config and then instantiate a new engine class, which I referenced um, just now. And it's going to take in our Godot config. Then we're going to attach engine.ref.current, which is the uh, React hook we created uh, just above here on line 50. And we're going to set that equal to the engine object that we're creating. Then we're gonna call engine start game in order to kick off our game's loading process. So again, that we're not running that function immediately, but that's the function we're creating called start engine. Below that, we have a function called register Godot, which is just going to add Godot as an object to the Godot ref, very similar pattern to our engine pattern. And then we have this function called fetch engine. And what that's gonna do is go get your a Godot game from an external source. You could also create this in your public directory of your Next.js or React application. That's where I started. But if you want to set up a separate CICD process in development for your Godot application, and let's say your final Godot application is hosted in something like an S3 bucket or whatever um, other CDN or hosting provider, however you want to set up to host those files that are exported by Godot, you're able to access them remotely inside of this fetch engine function on line 94. So we're just gonna use the native fetch method and call this Godot source variable, which is defined uh, earlier in this code uh, as the remote URL for our Godot folder, our Godot exported folder. After we fetch our Godot engine, we're going to attach it to the window object here on line 107. Finally, we're going to create a script and attach it to the inner HTML of our container ref. And we're, that's going to be as a child. And that's here on line 111. And you can see our container ref 
is the div that wraps our canvas element. All right, hopefully that makes sense. This process is a little confusing, but I can try to do a deeper dive in another video if someone's interested. I was trying to keep this video short and sweet to just talk about the two main methods, and I figure most people will actually fall into the first method of just adding an iframe onto their site. They're probably going to export their Godot project, put it in the public folder of their Next.js or React application, and then just use an iframe to point to that HTML file in their public folder. If your game is a standalone game, this covers most use cases and only if you need to access embedded JavaScript information in your React application do you need to get into a custom implementation like this. Hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I respond to every comment that I get. As always, thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.